Hey, Don here. Today's video is an actual lesson from my Guitar Gym subscription. You have the tabs available in the link below, so no need to sign up for anything. Just go straight there to grab them. The Guitar Gym is an ever-growing library of technique workouts, and it's divided by different techniques and tonalities. The idea is that you can customize your own technique workout depending on your goals and abilities, so you always have something new, challenging, and fun to work on. It's available as a standalone library on my Teachable and also as part of my Patreon. The only difference between them is that the Teachable version is a bit better organized due to the layout, but the material is all the same for both of them. So, grab your favorite guitar and then let's go straight into the lesson. This workout will improve both your legato and alternate picking. So when you look at the tabs, you're gonna see that it's written out in the first position. And the reason I did that is so the fingers correlate with the frets. And what I mean by that is that when you see one, two, three, that's not only the frets, but also the fingers you're gonna be using. So keep that in mind. I also wrote that out in the tab so you can see what I mean. But the idea is that you want to move this around the fretboard. So you're probably gonna spend very little time down in the first position, but that's where I wrote it out. And that's the reason for it. So this is a one note per string exercise, meaning that we're going to have one note per string. And I'm going to just demonstrate it here from the ninth fret for the legato. And like I said, it doesn't really matter where you start, it's all about the fingerings here. And as you can see in the tabs as well, it's called a mechanical workout. If you're new to the, the whole guitar gym stuff here, a mechanical workout is more about finding systematic ways of using your fingers. And then when you have the normal workouts, it's going to be more based on a certain scale or tonality or arpeggio. So that's the difference between the mechanical workouts and the rest. So this exercise is based on one note per string and we're gonna go through three fingers at a time systematically. So we're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four. And that's the fingers we're gonna be using and we're gonna use two sequences, one ascending and one descending. But you can see all that in the tabs and also in the demonstration that's gonna follow here. Uh, in the demonstration and also in the tabs, I've only done it on one string group because it's insanely boring to watch me go through this, but I think it's important for you to see me do it uh, one time at least. So keep that in mind uh, that you want to continue each uh, variation of the exercise on all string groups. And that's going to be different for you if you have seven strings or if you have eight strings or six strings. So that's another reason why I wrote it out only on the lowest string group here, because we all have different numbers of strings on our guitars. All right, so the first part here is we're going to do all hammer-on, so all left hand. Uh, and when I do this, I tend to mute the strings with this hand or simply use a cloth. And the reason why I do that is so I can focus on just getting the these fingers working on the strings and I don't want to have to bother with you know strings ringing because I'm not you know muting correctly with my right hand here because the whole point here is to make sure that you get a good tone and also you don't get any ringing between the fingers like this so it's almost like playing piano on the guitar and this is really good for your left hand timing so for the muting for this one you can use whatever you feel the most comfortable with whether that is just holding your hand like this like I do or use uh, some sort of cloth or a sock or you know those fret wraps either way works just find something that you're comfortable with all right so we have these uh, notes now and as you can see in the tab this is grouped in 16th notes and that means it's going to be four notes per beat or four notes per click so you're going to have one two three four one two three four one two three four and what happened here is that since we have three notes, but we have four notes per beat, you're going to have a moving accent. And this is very important because this is what's going to challenge you rhythmically and also get your hand in better shape timing wise and technique wise. So basically you're going to feel that the, the click or the accents will move from this finger to that finger to that finger just by going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So another thing you can see in the tab is that it's written out in 3-4 and that's because it takes four beats of four notes before it completes the first cycle of the exercise and then you're gonna basically swap this over like this so you get a mirrored shape. So still one, two, three, but now you start with one on the highest string, D in this case. So and once you've done that you go to one, two, four and then mirrored shape 
and then one, three, four. And then mirrored. And finally two, three, four. And mirror that. So if we put all these together with the click, it sounds like this. Once you completed the lowest string group, you want to do the same thing again, but now you start on the next string group, whatever that is for you. So for me, it would be A, D, and G. So I do exactly the same fingering, same sequence and everything, and then I go through D, G, and B, and then finally G, B, and E. Then I'm done with the ascending all hammers variation. I recorded this at 60 BPMs, but pick a tempo that works for you. So whatever tempo you feel that you can keep everything clean and you don't feel stressed, you don't feel any excess tension and you can really focus on good technique and the timing and everything, that's the tempo you should use. So it's not gonna help you by artificially like starting higher just because you feel better about yourself. So even if you have to go down to 30 BPMs or whatever, that's where you should be because that's where you're gonna get the most benefit for your technique. So don't look at the metronome, I just picked the tempo here and also I didn't want to play it too slow because it's quite boring to look at. I just want to get through the demonstration uh, at a fairly quick pace. All right, so once you've done this on all string groups on your guitar, you're gonna do the same thing again, but now we're gonna do descending. And the descending version, you can either start up here and then go back down, same way you came, or you simply just restart here as it's written out in the tabs. So in this case, it's just gonna be three, two, one instead of one, two, three, and then four, two, one instead of one, two, four. So like this. Then we mirror that. Then one, two, four, but four, two, one. Then mirror that. Then. So the same idea, just backwards. Uh, and the rhythmic aspect is the same, still 16th notes, still gonna get that moving accent. So this is what it sounds like on the low string group. <laughs> obviously move this up to the remaining string groups and then we're done with the left hand part of this exercise. Now I'm just gonna go down to the fifth fret just for you to see that you should change this up even within the same exercise. If you absolutely want to do the picking exercise on the same fret that's fine too but in this case you just move it to the fifth fret instead. So it's exactly the same exercise but now we're gonna alternate pick everything and you don't want to use any kind of muting thing here either. You, now you just want to rely on you know, good proper muting with the left hand and the right hand. So when you pick this, you're gonna find that it's quite tricky because basically when you alternate pick, and I'm starting with a downstroke here, so you're gonna go down, up, down, and then when you go back, it's gonna be the opposite. So up, down, up. So it's gonna feel quite tricky to do this. You both get one note per string, which is basically arpeggiated picking. And then you're also gonna get a string skip here between uh, the highest and the lowest note of each pattern. So if I just do the first pattern here, it's gonna be... And then you continue on like that. So here's the whole thing on this string group. Once you've done here, you do the same thing, you move it up to the remaining string groups. 
And then we go back and do the descending version now, but now we're gonna pick everything again. Starting with a downstroke and focus on where the accent moves the whole time. That's the easiest way to keep track of this. You can actually feel like you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So if you can keep track of that and you can see that that lines up with the click to the best of your ability, that's going to really help you keep your place with this exercise. So here's the descending version on the lowest string group. <laughs> before you make sure to do this on all string groups on your guitar and then you're done with the whole exercise and make sure that whatever tempo you choose it should be a tempo that works for you because you're not in competition with anybody so the biggest thing to think about when you practice any type of technique exercise especially something that's repeating like this is that every note sounds as good as possible and if it doesn't sound good or you, you feel that you're unsynchronized or something is ringing that you don't want to be ringing so basically anything that you don't like the sound of that shouldn't be there that should be absolutely forbidden when you practice exercises it's totally fine to screw things up when you just play for fun but when you do the exercises try to be as hard as possible on yourself not in terms of that you have to get up to a certain tempo, but actually finding a tempo where everything just works. And there's an actual uh, clip of uh, Paul Gilbert where he talks about practicing with a metronome. And he said something really profound there, which I, which I totally agree with. And that's, he said that he didn't use a metronome to push the speed. Instead, he used a metronome to hold himself back. So basically, he would find a tempo where everything locked in. So he could sit at that locked in tempo for a long period of time. And that's how your technique gets better. And if anything, you use the metronome to slow yourself down so you can get accurate as opposed to like, you know, being on right on the edge of your ability. You just do it so you can you know, really just lock it, you know, metronomically into the group. So really keep that in mind. There's a huge waste of time to do any kind of exercises like these if you don't think about the quality of the notes. And I know this one doesn't sound that great, but it's very effective and you really go through the left hand uh, in a proper way. And if you focus on this and do it daily for at least two weeks, you're gonna find a lot of benefit for both your left hand and your right hand. If you want another routine that goes really well with this one, check this video out.